After James Dean's tragic demise, a shocking memento was found amongst his belongings, and it revealed who the love of his life truly was. James Dean only spent a few years in Hollywood, but his gruesome end and the scandals he left behind have undoubtedly immortalised him. He's one of the most fascinating Hollywood queer icons, not just because of his tragically short life, but because of the endless number of rumoured affairs attached to his name. His secretive private life and the mysterious curses surrounding his dark fate make for one of the wildest celebrity stories in history. Though destined for celebrity, James Dean came from very humble beginnings. When he was only three, his parents decided to become bullfrog farmers in Fairmount, Indiana. But sadly, it was a doomed venture. Thanks to the Great Depression, the farm was a massive failure. Growing up, James Dean was especially close to his mother, Mildred. She was a big believer in the arts and would even construct miniature theatres out of cardboard for him to play with. Because of her, Dean learned to play the violin and dance and gained a long-lasting appreciation for poetry. In 1938, James Dean encountered the first nightmare of his life. His beloved mother had uterine cancer and two years later, she passed away. Dean experienced the kind of grief no nine-year-old ever should. However, Mildred's influence stuck with him. Dean eventually ended up studying drama at UCLA. He clashed mightily with his father over his career choice and enrolling in UCLA was the last straw. Though Dean ended up estranged from his only surviving parent, he didn't pump the brakes on his acting career in any way. After landing some early opportunities, he dropped out of school altogether in 1951 to focus entirely on becoming an actor. The same year that Dean dropped out, he moved in with a radio director named Rogers Brackett. As a young hopeful, Dean had met Brackett while working for CBS Studio as a parking lot attendant. However, there was something rather scandalous about this friendship. Not only was Brackett much older, but Dean also shared his bed. Although today it's widely accepted that James Dean was likely queer, back then the actor did his best to keep his personal life hidden. Dean made sure to tell his friends that he and Brackett slept in different beds. Though the details of their dynamic remain uncertain, what is certain is that Brackett helped Dean get his start in show business. Rogers Brackett may have helped James Dean land his first major role on Broadway, but this relationship had an incredibly disturbing undertone. Down the road, one of Dean's biographers and old friends, William Bast, referred to the actor as Brackett's kept boy. Moreover, Bast shared how he'd made an eerie discovery in one of Dean's sketchbooks. According to Bast, Dean had made a twisted drawing of a lizard, but had replaced its head with Brackett's likeness. This begs the question, if there was a transactional relationship here, did Dean deeply resent Brackett? While there are still rumours that James Dean slept his way to the top, there's no doubting that the man had a natural talent. The first feature film James Dean starred in was East of Eden. Initially, the director Elia Kazan had been looking for an actor similar to Marlon Brando for the role of Cal, so naturally James Dean, in all his brooding splendour, fit the bill to a T. Even the author John Steinbeck thought he was perfect. So, in 1954, the actor jetted off to Hollywood. East of Eden really laid the foundation for Dean's lasting legacy. He played the part of the complicated outcast so genuinely that most of his scenes were unscripted, the director keeping many of his improvised performances in the film. 
During the production, Dean met an actress he couldn't keep his eyes off of. The Italian actress Pier Angeli was working on a film in a different studio lot when she crossed paths with Dean. There was an instant spark between them, and what began with flirtation quickly evolved into an incredibly deep love for one another. But like many love stories in Hollywood, this romance didn't have a happily ever after. Angeli's later descriptions of her relationship with Dean have something of an innocent quality. According to her, they visited the beach often, sitting there or fooling around just like college kids. Dean even described Angeli in the most reverent of ways. Everything about Pierre is beautiful, especially her soul. Their entire courtship seemed dreamy, but reality got in the way. Though Dean may have been truly in love with Angeli, her mother turned her nose up at him. She had a strong distaste for his fashion, his vices and his overall behaviour. But perhaps worst of all, she detested the fact that he wasn't Catholic, so much so that she barred Angeli from seeing him. James Dean's studio, Warner Brothers, also didn't want him to marry. After all, there was nothing more marketable than a hunky young bachelor. Though Angeli defied her mother continuing to date Dean, it was only a matter of time before this young love imploded. And when it did, hearts shattered. Though James Dean had many affairs during his short life, it seems like Pierre Angeli really stood out from the crowd. For him, she really was the one that got away. According to gossip reporters, while Angeli and her new beau tied the knot, Dean could be seen across the street, straddling his motorcycle. When the wedding came to a close and the newlyweds emerged, the actor dramatically rode off. Whether this is true or not, he didn't have to worry too much. There were far more conquests in store for him. 1955 was the most jam-packed and tragic year of James Dean's life. On the heels of his breakout film East of Eden, he starred in another huge film, Rebel Without a Cause, alongside Natalie Wood and Sal Mineo. During production, Dean and Wood had a secret fling, but her response to their affair was scathing. In the end, James Dean certainly wasn't Natalie Wood's cup of tea because she reportedly said, sometimes Jimmy likes to hurt his partner and be hurt. I don't go in for that. But this didn't stop Dean pursuing beautiful women. According to the biography James Dean Tomorrow Never Comes, the actor managed to woo none other than Marilyn Monroe. Apparently the two stars shared a romantic getaway together and Dean even considered marrying the troubled actress. Though they may have looked like a picture-perfect pair, these two actors certainly had their personal demons. Even Monroe eventually admitted it wouldn't work, we'd end up destroying each other. Dean and Monroe were undoubtedly doomed from the beginning of their romance, but of course all of Dean's romances were doomed. The clock was already ticking. Dean's very last film was only his third major project. While working on Giant, he met Elizabeth Taylor, who cast her spell as expertly as she did with many other men in Hollywood. Apparently, Dean was so infatuated with his co-star that he confronted her husband, Michael Wilding, and said, I've fallen in love with your wife. She's going to divorce you and marry me. James Dean certainly had a bad track record for following through on marrying any of his partners, and Elizabeth Taylor was no different. However, there was one woman he connected with on a spiritual level, one who wasn't just a romantic partner but became one of his closest friends right to the end. Her name was Eartha Kitt. While it's difficult to parse fact from fiction in much of James Dean's alleged relationships, his deep connection with Eartha Kitt cannot be denied. To her, James Dean was simply Jamie, and behind closed doors they were like soul brother and sister. With Kitt later confessing, our love for each other just happened. I became his confidant and I taught him about stage presence. Wow. 
While their relationship may have been founded on a deep friendship, it also took a wildly scandalous turn. Perhaps one of the most dishy confessions out of Hollywood was that James Dean had slept with Eartha Kitt and Paul Newman at the same time. It was the stuff of every tabloid's daydreams. Both Dean and Kit came from the country and they bonded over the fact that they were two lost souls trying to make it in the big city. Eartha Kitt believed that she was so close to Dean that when she saw him for the very last time in September 1955, she knew something was terribly wrong. On that sad last meeting, Kit embraced Dean, but couldn't feel his spirit. It was a chilling omen. Only a couple of days later, Eartha Kitt received the news she'd already seen coming. One of the chorus girls told her, Jamie's dead. After only a few years in Hollywood, James Dean was gone at the age of 24. But what were the circumstances leading up to his tragic demise? In addition to acting, James Dean had a keen interest in racing and had even participated in several auto racing competitions. On the fateful day of September 30th, 1955, Dean was on his way to a racing event in Salinas, driving his shiny new Porsche Spider convertible. He'd originally planned to have it towed to its destination, but his mechanic, Rolf Wutrich, urged him to get a feel for the vehicle before the big race. So Dean got behind the wheel while Wutrich took the passenger seat, but this was a huge mistake. And some strange thing came over me, some almost different voice, but I must say something. Please do not get into that car. And I said, if you get into that car at all, by 10 o'clock at night, Next Thursday, you'll be dead if you get into that car. And he was dead the following uh, Thursday afternoon in that car. At 3.30pm, something uncanny happened. Dean received a speeding ticket in Bakersfield, an omen for what was to come. Afterward, he grabbed a Coke at a diner. But little did he know, he only had about two hours to live. At 5.45, while driving along what used to be the US Route 466, Dean's Porsche was in a head-on collision. While the driver of the other vehicle survived the crash with light injuries, James Dean wasn't so lucky. The crash had compressed his foot in between the brake pedal and clutch, and he had broken his neck and arms not to mention all of his internal injuries. His death was almost instant. His passenger, Wutrich, on the other hand, managed to pull through. Although Dean had been caught speeding only hours before the crash, witnesses insisted that he'd been driving at an acceptable speed at the moment of impact. Shockingly, they said it was the other driver who had swerved into Dean's lane. Dean's reported last words, uttered just seconds before the accident, were chilling. That guy's gotta stop. He'll see us. Right before he crashed into a car crossing over the centre line. heartbreaking end secured his immortality in celebrity culture, but the rumours that sprung up following his demise sought to root out every corner of the actor's life. First, there was the interminable gossip surrounding the crash itself. People began to whisper that Dean's Porsche was cursed, and for good reason. In the wake of the crash, there were even more victims. After falling off of a truck, the Porsche crushed a mechanic's legs. Then, when a used car dealer dismantled the Porsche and sold its parts, there were twisted consequences. For instance, the cars that held the Porsche's transmission, tyres and engine were also in awful collisions. 
Even the truck that transported the Porsche's chassis slid off the road and the driver sadly perished. Wilder still, the chassis was nowhere to be found at the crash site, which means the legend of James Dean's missing Porsche is still circulating today. Rolf Wüttrich may have seemed lucky, having survived the awful crash, but he wrestled with feelings of guilt for the rest of his life. In the end, he died in yet another car accident in 1981. He'd been drinking before he'd gotten behind the wheel. There was another part of James Dean's life that seemed to be cursed. Rebel Without a Cause was Dean's biggest film, but it too seems to have had cursed repercussions for its lead actors. You see, most of them lost their lives before they turned 45, and in the worst ways imaginable. First there was James Dean and his car accident, then a little over a decade later Nick Adams overdosed, taking his own life. In 1976, Sal Mineo fell victim to murder while Natalie Wood passed in a suspicious drowning accident in 1981. The mysterious coincidences that seemed to hover around James Dean only built him into a more mythical figure. By far the wildest biography of James Dean was James Dean Tomorrow Never Comes by Darwin Porter and Danforth Prince. It truly mined all of James Dean's romances, especially his queer dalliances. But perhaps the most shocking claim of all was that the actor had had a scandalous affair with Marlon Brando. James Dean had a lot in common with Brando. Both actors had been taught by Lee Strasberg and had connections to the director Elia Kazan. Even their brooding bad boy images lined up. However, according to Porter and Prince, Dean's affair with Brando was rather one-sided, with Dean far more invested in the romance. According to Brando, he never had a relationship with Dean, going so far as to say the actor was never a friend of mine. It's exactly this uncertainty surrounding the truth of James Dean's private life that has made him such a sensational figure. Though James Dean's relationship with Pierre Angeli concluded long before his passing, there was one more secret about this couple to uncover. Apparently after his death, something shocking was found among his personal effects an order for the solemnization of marriage pamphlet. This pamphlet confirmed that James had indeed wanted to marry her, as the name Pierre had been written in the spaces meant for the bride's name. It was a heart-wrenching memento of all the what-ifs James Dean never got to see through. As you may remember, James Dean and Elizabeth Taylor worked together on the 1956 film Giant and had an alleged fling. In the mid-90s, Taylor talked to an interviewer about her relationship with Dean and made a heartbreaking confession. She made the writer promise not to reveal what she told him until after she died, and he kept the secret for over a decade. She said that while they were making Giant, she would stay up late into the night with Dean talking. It was during one of these sessions that he told her he'd been abused by a minister when he was just 11 years old. American teens grieved the loss of James Dean deeply. When Rebel Without a Cause hit theatres mere weeks after his fatal accident, young people saw in James Dean a cool and powerful role model with a soft side, a hero they never knew they needed. To this day, much of James Dean's life has been pieced together through allegations and second-hand accounts. As he's no longer here to speak for himself, let's not forget that Dean said himself, I'm not a homosexual, but I'm not going through life with one hand tied behind my back. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe for more videos.